with this very first uh, conversation, we wanted to kind of uh, boil the ocean and try to define what design is because um, there's still a lot of, uh, I think, inconsistency in the way that people think of design in our space. Um, and I think that there's still quite a lot of um, education that needs to happen. Um, and there's a lot of assumptions about what design is. So it was just a really interesting conversation that we were having personally. And then we decided to kind of uh, try to recap some of that conversation and, and record it because uh, I think it would be useful for uh, some people out there. I think a good disclaimer is uh, design from the tennis perspective as well. You know, like what do, yeah. what do we think design is? And I think it's a pretty interesting topic because it's there's a lot of latitude in terms of what other people think about it. It's very interpretive. It's got a rich history. It's, um, yeah, it's kind of amorphous in the sense that design can be so many things, but in mm -hmm. depending on the field, it's uh, it's hyper focused on solving certain challenges. Yeah, and I think the other thing that we should probably note is that our we also have a bit of a different viewpoint on a lot of these topics because we are practitioners, but also business owners and entrepreneurs. So I think um, we probably have a very uh, well, maybe not very different, but. I think the point is just that a lot of the kind of thought process that we have internally and a lot of the conversations are also biased by the fact that we own a business, uh, a profitable business in the space. So a lot of the way, ways that we kind of think of design are probably also need to be considered uh, in terms of like how you actually run a design organization. Yeah, I think that's a great distinction. Mm -hmm. At a high level, we're basically talking about what design means to us. Design to me, in the context of our business, is um, it's planning. It's planning and then followed by the execution of that plan. And for me, it's not a lot about aesthetics. I think it, largely in my role, I do appreciate things that you know are appealing uh, visually, experientially. But at the end of the day, uh, in in my role, it often comes down to planning a project around business objectives and problem framing in order to, you know, cascade that to other production team members uh, who do focus on the execution and the aesthetics of, of things. But so, yeah, if we compartmentalize, it, that's that's what it is for me. It's largely intangible in a way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we we obviously both have a similar opinion on this, <laughs> but um, I think that like, again, this question is like, it's, it's a huge question with tons of nuances, but um, I think it's an interesting one because uh, you're right. Like uh, most people think that we talk to, especially um, if it's a potential new client or something, think of design as just like the, the aesthetic execution or output. And and even that is not, you know, I say most people, but it's really just depends on, <clears throat> I've noticed it depends a lot on like the sophistication of the challenge and the product that we're trying to build. So, you know, a smaller organization that's just looking for a, you know, brochureware uh, type of website for them design is, I just want something that looks nice. Um, and there's a place for that as well. And then as you kind of move up the, the chain of complexity you start front loading more and more um solutioning and uh i'd say like the importance starts shifting more and more to the <clears throat> solutioning and planning but then you also have even within that you have micro slices of potential products where like the aesthetic is very important because you're trying to achieve some sort of goal so like if you think of like apps and products um where organizations want you to spend money um aesthetic decisions can influence a whole range of behavioral um decisions of audiences right so like the colors the mood that you're setting the interactions like i think of like when we were looking at robin hood back in the uh gme phase where <laughs> people were kind of like criticizing <clears throat> robin hood as gambling because they had interactions where if you made a trade, they would like shoot confetti and, and 
there was a younger demographic that was using that trading pl platform. So um, I was thinking about, uh, you know, what is design and it's built in of, out of four pillars, I think. There's research, problem identification, planning, and, and execution. <clears throat> and each one of those pillars goes really deep. Could be its own practice even, you know, like you could have a practice that all you do is research, for instance. Um, and a lot of UX firms do that. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what we were discussing in our own business too, like the segmentation between UX practitioner versus UI practitioner. Like they're still T-shaped thinkers in their own domain and they still do their own deep research um, and delivery of that work. But you know, UX focused practice is, is quite distinct from a UI focused practice and the challenges are very different.